Um, I was asked to do a presentation about two neural wearables. Yes? Oh yeah, sorry. So hi guys, nice to meet you all tonight. <laughs> yeah. On the cover. Oh, here? Yep. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Practical retard. So, uh, short introduction because I have to keep it short. Uh, I'm Remco, I live here in Budapest and I run a few artificial intelligence projects and I'm also uh, organizing some startup awards and an artificial intelligence summit. And I'm, from origin, I'm a neuroscientist and I used to work, work together with a few American companies who produce uh, two gadgets, who I'll tell you a little bit more about tonight. Um, if you're interested, um, I'm organizing, as I said, the first artificial intelligence summit here in the city, and we're already run out of tickets. So if you guys still want to join, check out Budapest.ai. So, neurotechnology. Um, I'm going to present to you two gadgets tonight. You might be thinking, what is that thing on his head? Well, that is Fink. And what it's actually doing right now, while I'll speak to you guys, is actually electrocuting my brain. So, that's sort of an interesting complex. And the second device that I want to talk shortly about is Muse. Um, what I've always been quite interested in is, uh, recently you can hear a lot about like technology and all sorts of fascinating developments in society, but what does it really add to our quality of our lives? I mean, if you look at all of these new technological developments, the real question is, what does it actually, how, how, it will make, how will it make my life better during every day? And one of those interesting devices is Muse. Um, I used to be in the development team of Muse. And what it basically is, it's a device that allows you to meditate based on your brain waves. So you might think like, huh, meditation? Isn't that something spiritual and stupid? Well, the answer is no. It's actually based on neuroscience for almost like 95% right now. We can carefully look into the brain and see what's happening when you meditate. Um, it's actually in front of me, you might not be able to see it, but it's like a little headpiece. Um, it's called an EEG device, so it basically measures brain, uh, brain waves, which come from electrical activity coming from your neurons. When you think in a particular way, or you, or you have a different sort of mind state, this will result in a different way of how your brain communicates. Your brain communicates mostly by neurons who produce electrical activity. And this device measures that electrical activity. So what does Muse actually work like? If you put this device on your head, you will get the left screen. It has five sensors. And if it measures your brain activity well, it will basically fill your screen with all the colors. And then it has to do a short calibration, uh, because everyone's brain is different, and your brain is continuously different throughout the day. You continuously have to do a calibration session in order to get good quality of data. And what it then looks like, you can choose the amount of time that you want to meditate, and the standard time is like three minutes. Um, if you're done with Muse, it will give you sort of a graph, which divides your score. Uh, it gives you, uh, gives you an overview, either you are very calm or you're more active, you don't want to be active. When you meditate, the whole idea is to concentrate your thoughts at one point. So you don't want to be like, oh, I have to have a deadline tomorrow or oh, I have to do so much stuff. No, you actually want to like focus on one specific thing. And the interesting part is this device is able to measure whether you are concentrated at one thing or whether your mind is going all over the place. That's an interesting device. But I'm more, because of lack of time, I want to more talk about Think tonight. So what is Think? Think is the first device that um, is called like a neuromodulation device, which allows you to influence your brain. Whoops. Uh, through electrical activity. Um, we have all these scary images from like the 80s and the 90s that you had like these devices on your head that they used to cure epilepsy with or other conditions. And now, like one year ago, Fink got onto the market after five years of research, because otherwise you're not allowed to bring such a device onto the market, that it allows consumers to use this sort of technology. So the whole idea behind this is when I use this thing, um, I'm able to calm myself down without using chemicals or medicines or alcohol or pills, which makes it a very interesting device because it allows you to control the way you feel without being dependent on something. So the whole thing behind it is that 
If you look at the average consumption of caffeine, or pills, or medicines throughout our society, this is quite devastating. I mean, just for one day in your life, take, take a look at how many cups of coffee you consume. I mean, a lot of you might be active in the startup scene, like I am. And then I noticed today, like somebody said, Remco, is your heart going to explode anytime soon? And I was like, yeah, might be the case. And then I checked how much coffee I drink, and I actually drink about seven cups of coffee a day, which is probably not that healthy for me. Think about a way that you could actually have the same effect, so the concentration, the stimulation, without drinking these seven cups of coffee. Well, that's what you come and think, and that's what they try to achieve with a device like this. So, it has been scientifically proven to reduce stress or to induce energy. So you can kind of choose between the two extremities of like emotions. You can either choose to energize yourself or to calm yourself down. Um, you might ask yourself, "Oh, that sounds, you know, sounds cool, but what is it based on?" Uh, before this device was launched into the market, uh, they actually conducted like five years of studies to see, okay, so what areas of the brain do we specifically need to stimulate, and what kind of conditions to create these sorts of effects? Uh, to show you how it sort of looks like, so. Um, I'm using the number two right now, which um, is in my neck. Think about the neck massage. When you go to a masseur and you ask them to massage your neck, most people will say, oh, I feel so much more relaxed after that. Well, that makes sort of sense. Um, in your neck, all the main nerves that control your brain to calm down basically come together. And what this little thing does is it stimulates a part of my brain that controls all other areas to induce relaxation while also stimulating those nerves in my neck to tell my brain, hey Remco, you should calm down man. Oh, that works that way. This is kind of rocket science. Um, this is from a publication in Nature. So if you are interested in how this thing works, the only thing that you have to Google is Think and Nature and you get the publication that they have. So when you look at the little thing down there, it's called 10. And this is my neck, and where neocortex is, is my head. So this is how you have to look at it. And what it basically does right now is stimulate these two areas, and this is how the entire diagram looks like. Um, when it comes to research, I will sum it up shortly, but they use specific conditions to look at uh, stress hormones, and the most uh, noticeable effect is that when you put on a fake think and a real one and no think, the real condition showed significant reduce of all sorts of stress hormones like AMLEs, galvanic skin response, but also cortisol and adrenaline. So it definitely has a good effect. That was it. I hope it was a little bit understandable. <laughs> if you have any questions, I'm uh, glad to answer any. Thank you. Oh, Muse. Yeah, well, I, like, like I said, I have a little bit of a time shortage, but if anybody after this presentation wants to meditate with Muse, you're welcome to do so. Uh, compared to NeuroSky, um, when I first started with my old company, which was called Brain Fitness, we looked at NeuroSky and we were like, this is crap. So NeuroSky only uses one sensor, and the quality of data that uh, NeuroSky captures is, is, is garbage. It's, it's toys. I mean, you cannot say anything relevant about the brain with one sensor. I mean, I'm not, I haven't looked at their most recent headsets, but what they used to have, it's called the Mindwave. Nah, I would stay far away from that. I would even say that if you want to conduct real research, don't even use Muse, because it only has five sensors. And these five sensors are optimized to capture meditation, not something else. Yeah. <laughs> question then, what is the best headset for neurofeedback training? I would say the emotive. Oh, the emotive. Okay. Yeah, the Thank epoch. And, uh, can you get addicted to this stuff? Addicted to me to think? Well, I am already sort of addicted. So, <laughs> yeah. um, normally in my office, people say, Remco, are you using it again? I'm like, yeah, you have a problem with that? No, so... <laughs> <laughs> The, the interesting part is, is that uh, I don't fuck around with chemicals. So if you take caffeine, if you take alcohol, if you take anything that you physically have to like digest, it will always release a sort of addictive effect on you. 
The thing is that I created a mental addiction to this thing. Um, but the counter effect is that if I use it for three days in a row, I will see a significant decrease in effect. If I wait for a few days and then use it again, it seems to like, oh, I'm so chilled. But if I use it for like five days in a row, it doesn't seem to have much effect on me anymore after a while. Any other questions? You can ask, how does it feel like? <laughs> well, it, you can actually sort of like control the intensity. So you can put it to 100% and you're like, I'm getting a stroke. Or you can put it at 20% and then feel sort of chilled. Um, that's a bit fake. They say that it depends on the user. So you have to sort of divert between 50 and 100 percent. And the idea is that you feel something. So right now I'm moving my neck a lot, so it feels that somebody's stinging a few needles in my neck. That's okay, I got used to that. But for, for new users, it's a, it can be a bit of a weird experience. I think that you would speak about the mental addiction because all addictions are based on chemicals. If you look at, for example, alcoholism or you look at anything else, sex addiction, it's all based on dopamine or something else. The thing is that this thing doesn't release those chemicals in my brain. This is the main difference. Yeah, it's FDA approved, but it never got into Europe. <laughs> Uh, I wouldn't be able to legally sell it to you, no. <laughs> Brexit. <laughs> no, but it's FDA approved, but uh, as you can understand the complexity of using such a thing and telling your average day man on the street, like, hey man, you should stop using caffeine and drink that cup of coffee, you should stop doing this, and they're going to be like, what are you talking about? So it will take a time for, you know, to optimize this sort of product. Tried it while asleep. While asleep? Well, I once fell asleep with it on my head, yeah. But <laughs> besides that, no. It's, it's, it's actually sort of that uncomfortable, and you can actually feel it that well that I'm not sure if you could actually sleep on it. And I tried to meditate with it, that worked pretty well. But for the rest, no. You're more than welcome to try it, yeah. but I would recommend trying that new thing because that's a really interesting experience to do one time. Alright, thank you for your attention guys. <laughs>